In this video, I will show you how you can color grade the footage of your GoPro. I will explain why you should do this at all, what your instruments you need, what settings would make sense and how the basic tools work. I will show you two examples of a grading and at the end I will give you some tips on what you should always pay attention to. So there is a lot to talk about, take a few minutes and stay tuned. Color grading is the process of giving a video a particular look by using color. The goal here is not necessarily to create a particular natural look, but rather to convey a certain mood. So the decisive question should be which mood and which emotions you want to convey with your video. Should it be rather cheerful, exciting or rather sad or even gloomy? Each camera already has a certain look if you shoot with its standard profile, so does the GoPro. The colors of the GoPro are relatively strongly saturated and the standard profile is very rich in contrast. So why should you even care about color grading? The colors of your shot don't always match the look and mood you want to convey. Color grading is also a creative process. You might want to give your videos your own personal look, a look that stands out from the thousands of videos on YouTube for example. Or maybe you just want to copy the color grading of your favorite movie or give your video a more cinematic look. Color grading is definitely a very exciting topic and a very important part of the creative process in filmmaking. What do you need to color grade a GoPro video? Essentially, you can do basic color grading with any good editing software. Premiere Pro, Fanaka Pro or the excellent DaVinci Resolve, which is certainly the reference for color grading. An advantage is also that the basic instruments of color grading are the same for all programs and can be used in a similar way. In this video, I will work with Fanaka Pro, but that doesn't mean that you have to own Fanaka Pro to use the techniques shown here, because as I said, all programs work with similar instruments. How should you set up your GoPro to be able to optimally grade the footage in post? In general, for maximum flexibility in color grading, you should always shoot with a flat color profile. This basically increases the dynamic range and gives you more room for grading. On a GoPro, you have to activate ProTune and set the color to flat. I would like to add, however, that the gain dynamic range is rather small, but if you leave the color on GoPro, you will get much more contrast, which is not always easy to correct. On the other hand, adding more contrast is relatively easy. And now let's start with the actual workflow. Before we can begin with the actual grade, we need to color correct our shots. Color correction isn't about creating a look, it's just about adjusting the exposure, creating an appropriate contrast and correcting the white balance if necessary. In my opinion, this process is part of color grading in the widest sense, because every shot should be equally corrected before grading. This makes it much easier to create a uniform look later on. I start with the exposure and first correct the shadows the dark areas of the image. I use the color wheels as an instrument and the Luma waveform as an additional tool. Let's first have a look at the Luma waveform. It shows how bright or dark the different areas of an image are. The left side stands for the left side of the image and the right side stands for the right side. The value 0 stands for black and 100 for white. Simply put, you will lose details if there are areas of your image below 0 or above 100. If you shoot with flat, you will see that your image doesn't cover the whole range, also because the shot has very little contrast. If we now look at the color wheels, one of these wheels represents the entire image. In Final Cut, this is the master wheel. Changes will affect all areas of the image. Additionally, there is a separate wheel for the dark areas in the image, the shadows, a wheel for the bright areas, the highlights and a wheel for the midtones. You can use these color wheels to add certain colors to the areas of the image that are divided by brightness, but we'll get to that later. At the same time, you can use the exposure slider on the right side of the wheel to make the individual areas of the image brighter or darker. Since I want to add a little more contrast to the flat image, I drag the exposure of the dark areas downwards. I make sure that I don't get below the value of 0 in order not to lose any details. Then I do the same with the highlights. I brighten the highlights even more until the brightest areas in the image reach a value of 100. The image now looks a bit more contrasty than at the beginning. With the midtones, I adjust the brightness in such a way that the overall image looks right. The flat color profile also has relatively little saturation. Therefore, I add some saturation to the image with the help of the saturation control on the left side of the color wheel. Here too, you can edit the individual areas of the image separately if you wish. Now you should ask yourself whether the white balance of the image is correct or whether the tone of the image is too warm or too cool. Filters can also falsify the white balance of the image. As a general rule, white should look white, at least in this phase of the workflow. You can see whether the white balance is correct by using the RGB parade. It shows you the three color channels red, green and blue and how the colors are distributed across the image. You will immediately see if the colors are in balance or if one of the colors is present in excess. 
You can make corrections with the color wheels by bringing the color channels back into balance. If you drag the white dot in the middle in the direction of a certain color, you add that color to the image and simultaneously remove the color on the opposite side from the image. Watch your RGB parade and how it reacts to changes. You should focus mainly on bright and dark areas in the image. Let's say our image has a yellow cast, then we can correct it with the color wheels. For example, we can choose an area in the image that should be white and balance the three color channels with the highlight color wheel. You can do the same with a very dark area. Overall, however, I have to say that I am very satisfied with the GoPro's automatic white balance. It rarely happens that I have to correct the white balance in post. In order to give the image even more energy, I usually add some additional contrast at this point. For this I use another instrument, the color curves. The color curves are also relatively easy to understand. This instrument is not only included in every good editing program, but also in many photo editing tools like Photoshop or Lightroom. The lower left part refers to the dark areas in the image, the upper right part to the bright areas. For example, if you drag the curve in the lower left part upwards, you will brighten the dark areas of the image and vice versa. To add a little more contrast to the image, I drag the dark areas down a bit more, so I darken them and the bright areas up a bit more to brighten them. The result is a so-called S-curve. The great strength of the curve is that you can control individual areas of the image in more detail and brighten or darken them. The editing is not limited to the three areas shadows, midtones and highlights. There are also curves for the three primary colors. You can add or subtract colors from any brightness range to change the color mix. However, working with them requires some basic knowledge of color theory. Now that contrast, exposure and general saturation meet our expectations, we can begin with the actual grading. As I said, it is important that you color correct all clips before grading, because this will make it much easier for you to apply your grading to all clips later. Color grading is a creative process and there is actually no right or wrong, but for the beginning I would give you a decisive tip. Don't overdo it, make some minor changes. Think about which look you want to create and slowly approach it. If you have no idea what you want to achieve, watch some videos and try to copy some gradings you like. This way you will certainly learn a lot. For today I will show you two very different gradings using my GoPro footage. It makes sense if you also use clips with skin tones for your color grading. No matter what kind of grading you do, you always have to make sure that the skin tones of your videos still look more or less natural. Please keep in mind that my gradings are only examples and by no means perfect. Rather they should encourage you to create your own look. For my first grading I first work with the three color wheels. For the grading I always use additional color wheels and additional curves and not the curves and color wheels I used for the color correction. In this way I can restore the original situation without any problems. The aim of this first look is to give the clip a light teal and orange look while letting the blue colors pop. I start with the color wheel of the shadows and drag the dot in the direction of a rather dark blue tone. For the midtones, I drag the dot in the opposite direction. This also has a balancing effect. At the end I drag the highlights slightly into orange, but only slightly. I don't want the clouds to turn visibly orange. Now I select the color curves. Today I only use them to adjust the exposure optimally. I drag the curves in the middle part a bit more downwards. Thereby I additionally increase the contrast. Finally I work with the U and saturation curves. These curves should be taken with caution. On the one hand they lead very fast on a natural look and on the other hand the footage of the GoPro falls apart very quickly if you make too strong changes. Banding, artifacts and image noise are the result. I work my way through from top to bottom and start with U versus U. Basically you can use it to change individual colors. Blue and green are the dominant colors in these shots. I pull the green tones a little upwards, they get a light yellow touch. I don't touch orange because the skin tones are here. I also slightly lift the blue tones. This gives you this T look. With the next curve U versus saturation, you can saturate or desaturate single colors. I pull the saturation of green downwards and the saturation of blue slightly upwards. This makes the sky pop. With the next curve U versus Luma, you can make individual colors brighter or darker. I will focus on blue and green again and darken both minimally. With the curve Luma versus saturation, you can add more or less saturation to areas in the image depending on their brightness. The left part represents the dark tones, the right part the bright tones. Since black should always remain black and white always white, I pull both ends down completely and thus remove any saturation from them. I add some saturation to the areas in the middle and slightly desaturate the dark and bright areas. 
Finally, I briefly work on the skin tones. With the curve orange or the saturation, you can saturate or desaturate the skin tones or any other color depending on the brightness. I pull the dark areas of the skin tones down and desaturate them and the bright areas slightly upwards. With the vector scope, I can check whether the skin tones still look natural despite all the changes. The vector scope shows you which colors are present in the image and how saturated they are. The diagonal line is where the skin tones should be and as you can see, my skin tones are exactly along the diagonal line. That completes my first grading. If the grading is too intense for you, you can use the mix slider to reduce the effects of the individual curves and color wheels. With my second grading, I want to create a more moody look. I use the same footage again. With the color wheels, I pull the shadows into a dark blue, the midtones into a very yellowish orange, and the highlights into a bit stronger orange, even if only slightly. With the luma curve, I darken the midtones slightly. I pull the black value that is the lower left end upwards. This turns black into dark gray. In this way, this faded look is created, which is typical for a moody color grading. With the U versus U curve, I drag the green color slightly upwards into yellow and the blue tone slightly downwards. Green and blue are now relatively strongly desaturated and slightly darkened. I also desaturate the very bright and dark areas in the image again with the Luma versus Saturation curve. With orange versus saturation, I desaturate the dark areas of the skin tones. And that completes my second color grading. In conclusion, I would like to give you a few tips on what you should pay attention to when color grading. Learn to read and use the video scopes. They are a crucial tool for color grading. A good color correction is the condition for every color grading. So before you start grading, you should color correct all your clips. Don't overdo it, my examples are already relatively intense. Start with slight adjustments and slowly get to a look. Make sure that the footage of the GoPro does not show any artifacts or other defects after your grading. The skin tones are an important part of your look. If they deviate too much from their natural color, your grading will not look good. Check this using the vector scopes. With this I would like to say goodbye for today. If you are interested in my equipment, check out the links in the video description. If you liked the video, give me a like as feedback, subscribe to the channel for more tutorials and see you next time.